guys, it's me, Jake, from JakeMan21642, and today I thought I would do another round of updates and just a quick tour of my personal vehicle. This is my daily driver, my 2003 Honda Accord EXL 5-speed. For those of you who are new to the channel, um, just had a lot of requests to do an update video, and I actually have not done one since October, and I apologize for that, but I just started my freshman year of college, and I'm working along at the same time, so I've been very, very busy. I am busy. Probably, I have maybe two days a week where I'm not either at work or in a classroom, and I'm not complaining because I'm so lucky for my job. I love my job. I love all of my automotive tech classes. I'm so lucky for all of it, and I love every second of it, but I just have neglected doing an update video of my car. Anyway, um, a lot has changed in the car. Uh, actually, not over time, really. I've just done a lot of this in the last week or two, but since the last time you guys have seen this car, it's done about 3,000 miles. Um, just straight up commuting, around town driving. Um, I usually go out of town at least once or twice a month. So we'll go ahead and give you a walk around of the exterior. Um, as you can see, this one is finished off in satin silver metallic, um, for those of you who don't know that. And I did just completely detail the car yesterday inside and out, uh, washed and waxed it and all of that. Because as you can see, it is December in Virginia and it is 80 degrees outside right now. So I really took advantage of the nice weather we're having this weekend. So along the exterior, as you can see, uh, I do have the windows tinted, including the front windows. I do have a 35% tint uh, all around. And coming up front, um, as you can see, one of the latest things I did, which you can actually still see a little bit of the buffing compound over here on the edge, but I did professionally buff the headlights at work. Um, I actually used a buffer and some buffing compound and really got at them. And I think this that's probably the best thing you can do to your headlights other than one of those kits. And even if you don't have a buffer, just some compound and some elbow grease will do a fantastic job. Um, most of my commuting for school is on the highway. And I do go through a construction zone, so it has gotten some rock chips up front. If it was a newer car, or if I were to buy a newer car, I would definitely get a 3M clear bra or something, but it's a 12-year-old Honda. I'm not going to cry and get upset over rock chips, and they're really not that noticeable with the silver color on this car. So probably the biggest update since the last time you guys have seen it, and especially since this is something I have been talking about, is I finally did get new tires on the vehicle. Um, it is riding on these Michelin Premier All Seasons now. For those of you who don't know, I was riding on Yokohama uh, Avid and Vigors, which were fantastic tires. To anyone uh, looking at those, I would completely recommend them. But I wanted to go with the Michelins because these are just fantastic tires, and I've had a lot of experience with Michelin tires on cars that aren't mine, and I've heard great things about them. So these are the newest, uh, well, Michelin's newest kind of all-season tire. These are what are pretty much replacing the newer version of the premises. So I decided to go with these. They are 205 60R16s, and you can see that beautiful tread. They are nice and meaty. They've been on here for about 300 miles now. And I can say these are a fantastic tire. They are so good. They made this car so much more fun to drive because that was the one thing about the Yokohamas is they were low rolling resistance. Not as bad as some low rolling resistance tires I've driven, but definitely makes a difference not having them on the car. But these are fantastic tires so far. And the car just rides like a dream on the highway now. The turn-in is definitely a lot sharper with these, and it overall just handles so much better. Um, another thing on the exterior that I did do was I got two brand new windshield wiper blades. But these are two brand new Honda OEM windshield wiper blades. And this is just a little something for those of you who own 7th Gen Accords or just don't know about this. Um, I actually read online a lot because I was looking to get new wiper blades. It had Honda OEM ones from a dealership on it before. And the more I looked at wiper blades the more and the more I read on forums, these are actually metric sizes. Um, they're measured in millimeters. So you can get two that are equivalent somewhat to these, but they will leave a massive part of the windshield unwiped. And basically the Honda OEM ones are the best fit, so I got both of these on Amazon for I believe around $16 or $17 each. So they honestly are cheaper than some brands like Bosch or some of the more high-end wiper blades, and they're fantastic blades. So call me a snob, say what you want, but I decided to stick with the OEM ones, and so far they have been fantastic. Of course we haven't had a day of rain since I put them on the car. 
Otherwise, around the exterior, everything is pretty much the same. Um, as I mentioned, windows are tinted. I still do have the LED light up here over my license plate, the plate bulb, which that has been perfect. So I guess we'll go ahead and step inside, and I'll give you guys a mileage check on this. Inside, I mean, it is in daily driver form right now, but I did clean it out yesterday. Condition the seats and all of that, and as you can see, 144,000 miles. And these seats still look fantastic. I mean, there's a little bit of cracking around the edges just from getting in and out. But this really just shows the nice, high-quality leather that Honda and Acura uses. I was in a Lexus RX 350 yesterday at work. Only had about 75,000 miles on it. And it was that, it wasn't even the standard Lexus leather. It was the really nice, soft leather that they used. But both of the front seats in that vehicle were trashed after 75,000 miles. And this just really shows the quality. It has held up perfect. And as you can see as well, I do still have the all-weather floor mats in here. Um, those are probably one of my favorite purchases I've made for this vehicle. So we'll start it up. And as you can see, I'm sitting right now at 144,281 miles. Now, if you did hear a little bit of a weird noise when I first turned the key, and you may have seen this from the exterior, but I do have a dash cam now. Um, I actually picked this up on Amazon. It's just one of their uh, cheap dash cams that was on there. I think it was like 28 bucks. And it does film in 1080p, and it's actually a really nice little camera. But I did buy that just to personally have. I think these are a uh, decent investment, especially for 28 bucks just to have. And I already have been in an accident and had to go through all of that. So pick one of these up. It's worth it. I'm not going to be making bad driver videos or anything like that unless I catch something exceptionally stupid but it is plugged in right here for now as well i need to get a splitter to plug it into the center console i just haven't had a chance to pick one up i swear i have one somewhere but for now it's just plugged in right here um otherwise everything inside is pretty much the same as it's been steering wheel really no new signs of wear or anything i have noticed that i've kind of and the time I've owned it rubbed the steering wheel audio controls off a little bit, especially the channel from skipping through songs on my phone. And you can see that opposed to the cruise control, which I rarely ever use in this car. But otherwise inside, everything is nice material, nice shape. Everything is holding up fantastic. I mean, I have no complaints in here, especially for 144,000 miles. This car has been perfect. And I have put, um, now that I think about it, I have put 15,000 miles on this car in a little under 10 months, so I can't complain about anything. Um, down here in the center, as you can see, I did get a new shift knob. For those of you who remember, this is actually the shift knob from my uh, 2002 Civic Si. I just, I like, I really like the weight of this knob. I like the way it looks, and so I threw it in here. But as you can see, five-speed manual, still perfect. And I do still have, just for you OEM snobs, the original shift knob, I even keep it in here. So, there's that. But, everything else inside of here is perfect, and I was also thinking about it last week. I've been daily driving stick shift for over a year now, and have absolutely no complaints. I've always driven stick, I've always owned a vehicle with a manual transmission, but I have now had both of my cars, my Beetle and my daily driver, have been manual transmissions for a year. No complaints at all. If you have any doubts about you and a manual transmission or you want something with a manual transmission but aren't sure if you like it, just go out and get it. I promise you, you'll enjoy it because I enjoy, have enjoyed every second I've spent with this. But coming around the interior, I mean, nothing is really that different. Go ahead and cut the headlights on. Um, window's already down. I will say one thing I'll point out, which you may not even be able to see on this video. But I have put two very, very, very small little chips in the tent on the driver's side window. There's one that's down along the bottom, which I think it may have been something that was in the window track that did it. And then there's this tiny little one right there, which I did that on my own. I was getting out one time and my seatbelt hung up and it flew around and this metal piece hit right here. I just made that tiny little chip. But I do have a free warranty. I could get this entire window retinted if I wanted to, but it's not that big of a deal to me. And the tint everywhere else on the vehicle is perfect. They did an incredible job tinting this car. Go ahead and pop the trunk. 
my hood. Um, show you the back seat really quick. I mean, nothing is really changed back here. Lately, this car has just been me commuting back and forth, so I really haven't had a lot of people in the back seat lately. And then around here, you can see everything in the trunk is the same as well. I do have my detailing stuff over here. My jump pack, some spare coolant, just because I had it left over and I kept it in here. And then more detailing supplies as well as tools, some CDs in there, stuff like that. My welding helmet for welding class up there. And then my work boots for school as well. I just keep all of that in the car. And you can see too, especially since I'm filming this video at a decent time, you can actually see a little bit of the exterior lighting on the car. Especially on the pre-refresh rear end of these vehicles, because everyone is obsessed with the post-refresh. But I really like the design of this. I think it's nice, pretty, classic Honda with the lighting. And I prefer the 0304, where everything uh, is kind of just broken up and looks a little bit better. As you can see as well on this one, as I mentioned, the LED plate light. That's probably one of my favorite things uh, I've done to the exterior of this vehicle. Coming around to this side, go ahead and show you inside of here another thing I picked up. I scored this on eBay for like 10 bucks. I got an original owner's manual. And I promise you, it was not this dirty uh, when I got it. This is for me using this while I was working on the car. It's gotten nice and grubby already. But I also got, along with that, I know this is just a mess of receipts in here. But I also got, along with it, the quick start guide, warranty booklet. It actually came with a radio co co code card, which I should probably get rid of because it won't work in this car. The original warranty card right here for Michelin tires, which is what this car came with from the factory. And then it also came with the seat belts and some other uh, safety guides. So that was totally worth it and a cool pickup on eBay. And this is nice to have because it does have a lot of vital information for the car that I don't have to hunt on Google for now. Because this car, the dealership I purchased it from, they picked it up at auction. So, I mean, that's the thing. You know that when you work at a dealership is 90% of the time if a car has come from auction, it's not going to have the owner's literature. That stuff, I swear, auction employees probably take it out of cars. Up front, um, funny enough, in my last update video, I mentioned that I hadn't even had to replace a bulb on this car. The next day, one of my headlights went out. Um, I was leaving my night class, I had my brights on, and then I finally got to the highway, and I looked in the reflection of the car in front of me, my reflection in their uh, back window, and I had a headlight out. So I took it the next day, and I uh, know people are going to make fun of me for this and tell me I'm the worst auto tech major in the world, but I took it to Honda and got both bulbs, replaced and installed for 50 bucks, which I'm not going to complain about. They probably would have cost just as much for me to buy it and put it in myself. And the reason I did that is because at the same time I also decided to get a battery, which I called around before going to Honda, and Honda actually had the cheapest battery, including the core charge and installation. So wasn't going to complain about that. It would have been more expensive for me to go to Pet Boys and buy a battery and put it in myself. So I finally did replace that Bosch battery that was in this car. I've got a brand new Honda OEM one inside of here with a 100 month warranty. It's a 500 cold cranking amp battery, so pretty decent one. And inside of here as well, you can see with the headlights just why I took it to a dealership to get that replaced. And especially too, because it was this side, it is so difficult to get to. That one you can kind of see but it's also very difficult to get to. I mean, if you look up online how to replace the headlights in these, there are so many different ways because it's so difficult. People have tried to create their own ways. Um, the last thing up underneath the hood in this vehicle, and I'm sure those of you who follow me on Instagram or my Facebook page or Facebook friends with me will know all about this. I did get brand new radiator hoses and I got all of this on Amazon, surprisingly enough, because they pretty much have Honda's part catalog on there, all Honda OEM parts. But uh, I did get two brand new uh, radiator hoses, as you can see right there, and down there, very nice and easy to replace. I got a new thermostat housing, thermostat, and then the thermostat gasket all together down there installed. And then it does now have Honda OEM blue coolant in it, 
It did have green coolant in it, which for those of you who own Hondas and don't know, if you run green coolant in them, there's a possibility it can tear up your water pump. So I learned that in class. I'm glad I put the correct uh, fluid in here. And then I also replaced the radiator cap just because those can cause issues, so it's nice to have a fresh one on there. And in the middle of all that, uh, my friend uh, Matt MKM230 came down the same day and we did some work on his car. But we ended up uh, shearing a bolt off on the thermostat housing. So we had to tap that out and then I got three new bolts from Lowe's, I think it was, because it really didn't matter to put in there and those are holding in very nice and tight. But we did end up taking the radiator out just to have easier access and my radiator's in fantastic shape. And now that I've done pretty much everything else on the cooling system, no reason to replace that. But otherwise, everything else on this car has just been perfect. I, everyone that knows me knows how much I just love this car. I, I swear, I say it every video, but out of every car I've owned, I have enjoyed this one the most. It has just been a fantastic vehicle. So I'll go ahead and cut this right here and we'll throw in a little quick drive portion. what I mean about these they just and I know everyone's laughing at uh, me and my front-wheel drive Honda right now but this thing I love the way it handles because anyone who's actually driven a 7th Gen Accord will understand what I'm talking about even though I do have a pretty rare spec of the vehicle right here in the EXL four-cylinder with a manual transmission but these cars have just such a balance of ride comfort and handling and I love the way this car handles, especially because it feels very similar to the way my first Honda, my CB7 1993 Accord did. It just has that same familiar feel to it, which I love, but it handles like a dream. It's so much fun to drive. And you really do forget that you that it is a mid-size family sedan. You know, all of my friends and I joke that this is such a dad car because it is a dad car. Like a, I'll admit that. There are not a lot of 19-year-olds out there going, yeah, I want a 2003 Accord EXL.
right there you basically get to see what I do with this car every single day. But this is how I pretty much spend uh, at least four days a week driving to school. Just cruising on the highway and this thing, I mean right now I'm at 70 miles an hour and it's revving just above 2k RPMs. Like that, that is probably one of my favorite parts about this vehicle is just how low it revs and how comfortable and balanced and controlled it feels on the highway. You never get tired of this car. And the seats too in the 7th gen are so perfect. They're so comfortable. You can just get in this thing and cruise for hours. And not, I don't have a single complaint about it. But with all of that being said, because I know I'm probably the worst person to narrate a test drive, this is why I rarely do test drive videos, just because I can never think of exactly what to say, but overall in this video, I think my summary of this car is just, it's fantastic, and I really, I don't know, I don't want to say I bought this car not thinking I would keep it for a while, but as of right now, I have no plans to get rid of this at any point in time. I really... I at least want to keep this car until I'm through college. Because I know everyone's laughing like, ha ha ha, yeah Jake, you're 19 and have owned five cars at this point, but this real, this, I have not had a vehicle that has overall fit me as well as this one has. It's a comfortable cruiser, it's a great city, around town car, it's very easy to drive. Um, that being said, after I got new tires, it definitely sharpened up the steering, made it a lot snappier, which I love even more. But it's still a very easy to drive car. It's a very easy to drive manual transmission, but it's very typical Honda. But I think the 7th Gen Accord is overall just a great, well-rounded vehicle. That being said though, the new Accord is still very nice. I mean, the 8th Gen as well, which is, I know, the gen that a lot of people don't like, but the 8th gen is also a fantastic car. Seats aren't as nice as this vehicle, but it's about all I can think of. But even the new Accord, we have a 2013 EX at work right now, and even that car is very enjoyable to drive with the CVT transmission. But as always, guys, um, thanks for watching. Any questions, comments, anything like that, drop them down below. Um, the Accord updates will probably become a bi-monthly thing. I'm just saying that because I'm so busy with school and work and all that. And really, there's not that much to report on every single month. But that being said, I am starting winter break next week. So I'll be at home for four or five weeks, still have work. But I do want to do some more videos with this car, maybe like a back roads drive. Um, show you guys the lighting features of it at night. But that being said, any videos that you guys want me to make, um, just request them down below and I'll see what I can do. And update video on the Jetta and Rabbit and Beetle, all of that coming soon as well, now that I'm on winter break. But as always guys, thanks for watching and subscribe for more.